Today we'll learn one of the easiest ways to clean your backdrop in Photoshop. Also we'll talk about what if you're a professional and you have tens of images to deal with. So let's get started. As you can see the backdrop is very crumpled. Our first job here is to separate the subject from the background. Now there are a couple of ways of doing it. One of my favorite ways is just clicking and choosing one of these three tools, object selection, quick selection or the magic wand and at the top you will see select subject. Now if you just click on it, it will process on device and this is the result. However, if you want a little more accurate result, this is what you can do. In the later versions of Photoshop, click on the drop down right here and you have the option to process it in the cloud. So when you click on select subject now, it's going to process in the cloud and as you can see, the selection is much more accurate. So make a copy of the background layer. You can just drag it and click on the plus and in this copy, this is for the subject you can just click on the mask button. Now the subject is separated. Now we want the backdrop without the subject so that both of them are completely separated. So select the background layer and then press Ctrl or Command J and you can name this backdrop. Now how do we remove the subject? We already have a selection. So hold the Ctrl or Command and click on the mask right here. We have the selection active again and we have to select everything and more. We have to leave some space. So let us expand the selection by going to select modify and then expand right here. About 50 pixels is fine, hit OK. Make sure every hair is covered, everything is covered, nothing is left out. As I can see right here, there's a little bit of hair, we don't want that to get left out, so you can use the lasso tool right here, hold the shift key to add to the selection and simply add these little things to the selection as well. Make sure nothing is left out. Once you're sure, you already know what to do with this, you can fill it by going to edit and then content aware fill. Now inside of that you can choose which areas you want to sample and this is a pretty good result. You can choose the output to go into a new layer but the current layer is fine. You can choose current layer. This will just make it simple. Now let us take a look at just the backdrop. By the way to keep any layer solo and all of the layers turned off you can hold the alt key or the option key and click on the eye. Everything else turns off. Now let us improve it as if it was just the backdrop. So with the help of the patch tool you can just select these areas and improve these. By the way, make sure source is selected and patch normal. Let us do the rest of the areas. The reason why we are improving these areas which would be covered by the subject anyway is because if these areas are left too dark, when we blur the backdrop, those dark areas are going to spread out and show up. We don't want that. Hold the Alt key or the Option key back again and click on the eye. Everything turns back on. And now for the show time, go to filter and then Gaussian blur. But wait, before doing anything, do not forget to convert for smart filters so that you can change the value of Gaussian Blur later. Also there's a trick about it later, we'll get to it later. Let's go to Filter, Blur and Gaussian Blur. Zoom out a lot and then slowly and gradually increase the blur. Stop at just the point where you stop seeing all of those crumpled areas. So at about 120 is fine, so for a safer side let's keep it at 160, hit enter or return. Now let's zoom in. Let's see if everything is alright. It looks good but very very artificial. Also the hair is all gone. Selection is not 100% proper and it cannot be. So how do we get everything back? So first of all to make the image look seamless again, take a look at the face. There is noise but in the background there is none. So there are two ways of adding natural green. Actually there are many but I'm going to recommend two. Press Ctrl Shift N or Command Shift N. New layer dialog box is going to show up. Change the blend mode of this upcoming layer to overlay. Also you want to check this. Fill with overlay neutral color. If there's a gray layer, absolutely 50% gray and you change the blend mode to overlay, it just vanishes. Because overlay is a blend mode which darkens everything that is darker than 50% gray and brightens everything that is brighter than 50% gray. And it hides 50% gray. And let us name this layer green. Hit OK. Now you want to convert this layer into a smart object by going to filter and then convert for smart filters. Hit OK. Then let's go to filter. By the way, you don't have to hit OK all the time. Just click on the checkbox but then again this is a tutorial we have to create it for everybody. So filter, noise, add noise. Now you can add as much noise you want because this is a smart object we can change this later. Make sure it's uniform and monochromatic. You can also choose Gaussian up to you. Gaussian. I know I pronounce it wrong. It should be Gaussian. So now as you can see the noise is very very sharp so we have to blur it a little bit. Let's go to filter, blur and then Gaussian blur <laughs> and then let's apply 0.4 how do you feel about that? 0.4 is nice or let's go lower, 0.3. This is more like the existing noise. Now it is time for us to decrease its opacity and match it with the existing image. There you go. Now it is seamless. Now still it doesn't look perfectly matched. So here's another trick. Go to the mask of the subject. Alright, turn off the green for now. Select the brush, 
take a hard round brush and just paint an area here outside, which you can fill easily later. So paint this area in white. So now we have an idea of how the original noise looks like. So now we can turn this one on and control the opacity to match it. So let's take it down. At about 34, this matches pretty nicely and we can go with that. Also, it is not as easy as that. If you take a look at the highlights, there's less noise. In the shadows, there's more noise. So you might wanna double click on the right hand side of the layer. This takes it to blend if and take it away from the highlights slightly. So take the slider of the underlying layer from right to left. As you can see, it slowly and gradually is going away from the highlights as we move the slider. But this is a very harsh situation. So hold the Alt key, the Option key, click on the slider to break it apart. Take it apart like that. Keep it at half. There you go. Hit OK. And this is a very, very blending noise. Looks pretty good. Now we can come to this mask and just fill up that area. Back in black. There you go. But what about the missing hair and the selection not being proper? Now since it matches so much, we can just paint out the hair and you wouldn't even realize it. So select the mask and this time choose a soft round brush and you can decrease the flow if you want to. So let's decrease it to about 20%. Take the brush, white as the foreground color and just get back the hair. That's fine. You can also increase the flow all the way high and even if you paint a little more, it just matches perfectly. So let's get the hair back right here. Not an issue at all. Even here, it perfectly matches. There you go. We got the hair back, everything is matching, and it's just so nice. Now, you can also do the other parts of the body, but I think it's perfect. Now, if it looks a little odd, don't worry. We can always go back to green and change the value slightly. I think it needs to come down a little bit to about 24. There you go. That matches very nicely. And that's how to clean your backdrop. Wanna have a look at the before and after? So here is the before and here is the after. Pretty nice, isn't it? Have a look at the hair. Everything is still intact. Here's the before, here's the after. Pretty cool. Now wait, I have to do some advertisement here. Trust me, this is an important one that you'll like. So remember when we added the green, if we wanted to change the blend if or the amount of it that we wanted the highlights, we would have to open up the blend if and change it right here. If you wanted to change the amount of Gaussian blur, we would have to click right here and change it from here. Or if you wanted to change the noise amount, you would have to just discard the Gaussian blur, change the noise and then see the preview again. So instead of doing all of this, if you have the Piximperfect compositing panel, it just makes it way easier. So this is a panel completely made for everything in compositing and this is a type of compositing. So let's say you wanna add some grain, you would go to the structures section and just click on plus. It adds the grain for you. You can bring the grain wherever you want and here's the best part. You can control the amount of grain and the blend if and everything from right here. Let's say you want a little more grain, it increases. Let's say you want to increase the size of the grain. See, it increases. You want to decrease the size, you want to increase the irregularity, you want to decrease it. It gives you much more control over it. And you can also control the blend if. So the blend if is similar to double clicking on the right hand side of the layer. It just moves the same slider. Plus you have other options to turn it off or delete it or add more. This is the plugin to get for compositing, whether you want to match colors with two buttons or create shadows with two buttons and so many more features. End of my marketing. Now let us talk about what we can do when we have tens or even hundreds of images that we have to run through all of this process. We don't have the time for that, especially if you are a professional and this advice is only and only for you if you are a professional. So let's make a duplicate of the background layer by right clicking on it and choose duplicate layer and create a new document. Click on OK and here's what you can consider. Press Ctrl or Command J to make a duplicate of the background layer and then go to filter. You can consider using the plugin called Retouch For Me Clean Backdrop and it automatically cleans up your backdrop. Now you can go ahead and choose the size of the dirt in the backdrop. For example, coarse dirt, medium dirt, fine dirt. So I've chosen medium and it works for this image. Of course, you can control how much you want to reduce it. So this is very little, you can increase the amount. Let's keep it at about 100%. You can also choose to make mask and click on apply. And you're done. Here's the before, here's the after. Pretty good, isn't it? And it didn't do anything to the subject. And the best part is you can automate the process and run it through hundreds or thousands of images. And Retouch For Me is not just limited to clean backdrop. It is the best series of AI retouching plugins that I have seen. It does fantastic automatic healing, automatic high-end dodging and burning. And you can run your entire retouching process right from removing blemishes, high-end dodging and burning, cleaning the backdrop, cleaning the fabric of the clothes, 
retouching the eyes, everything automatic with one click of a button, that too for thousands of images. So just click once and all your hundreds or thousands of images would be processed. We actually created an action about it and explained the entire process in this video, which you can check out later. However, big warning, this is only for professionals and I only recommend it if you generate an income from your professional photography or retouching work because these are quite an investment. So that's all for cleaning up backdrops. Here's a quick little recap. First of all, you need to separate the subject and the backdrop. So here's the subject, here's the backdrop, and we simply blurred it. Also, don't forget to clean the middle, otherwise the dark is gonna spread out. Also, we added the noise to make it seamless, and then we can bring back a little bit of the hair. That's pretty much all there is to it. Now, this is not the only way to do it. There is another method, and we made a video about that as well, which you can watch a little later. That is a little more advanced, takes a little more time for more complicated situations. I hope this video helped you, and if it did, make sure to give us a like, and also don't forget to subscribe, and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tips, tricks, or tutorials. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned, and make sure that you keep creating.